Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And us just chatting for a bit for everything to catch up and do its thing and make sure it's all working because I had a weird camera flicker there before I started going live. So, Chris is here yep. in his light up, his light up Christmas sweater. Just hello, do... hello, everyone. Yeah, do a pass while we're. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the chaos. Welcome to the chaos. Oh, let me quickly, one other thing I need to do, a little, a little thing or my bopper. No, wait, wrong thing. Do, do, there we go, so that my phone doesn't interrupt it either. Okay, hello. Hello to everyone. Uh, if it's not one thing, it's another. Okay, everything, hopefully. Also, announcing this now anticipating a bit of backlash about it but i am in a corner and i don't have a choice really ads during lives it is just part of doing this as a job and youtube a lot of people are aware youtube has updated and changed the policies regarding ads during lives for the first however long i wasn't enabling them because i would just add them afterwards because AdSense does help keep the lights on, keep the garage heated, etc. Um, yeah, they changed that. And basically the options are now in or out. And I would love to just opt out and not ever show, show ads at all on any of my videos in a perfect world. That'd be great. But it seriously contributes to the cost of me putting up all this content for free. So I chose the least invasive option basically and ads are supposed to show up every half an hour i space them as far as possible so we're just going to test it out today see how it goes we'll just see we'll just see and who knows i know youtube's catering towards more of the the gamer streamers and those types of ones that do like six and ten hour long like they just live stream all day every day and that's kind of, I think, who they're catering towards. And obviously I'm not going to, I don't know. I don't know. So we'll just, we'll just see. It's, uh, it's really frustrating. And yes, Christy is 100% correct. Because yeah, the big wigs in their ivory towers that press all the buttons and run the robots and the algorithms, they don't care about the little people. And I'm the little people. So we'll just see. We'll just see how this goes. This is, this is new for, for me and for everybody. And like I always say to you, you don't have to sit through them. You can hit click I, or like click to skip or whatever. I never, that is one thing I don't do. I do not enable the ones that like force you to sit through them. You know, I, that, I will not cave that low, hopefully ever. <laughs> Cause I just think that's rude. So that said, that said, we're just gonna, um, keep doing our thing yes and kind of emma that's actually kind of what it, and that's why they've enabled it because you think of the the streamers that go long haul and do you know 10 hours you have to have breaks so that's why they're doing it and i get that and if i was streaming you know crazy long that would actually kind of be perfect it's like oh here we'll do an ad break and i can run to the bathroom i did that right before we started <laughs> I was like, I gotta go. Ah! <laughs> so in some time, sometimes it works. But anyway, anyway, that's the gist of it. And we'll just, we'll just see what happens. It's, it's kind of frustrating. I'm not kidding when I joke about being at the mercy of the powers that be, the robots, the algorithms, etc. That's literally my entire career. It's some days exhausting at the, at this exact moment, it's exhausting. But anywho, anywho, we got a bunch of you here. I appreciate you guys being here. And yeah, stay tuned to the end. There will be announcement at the end of this live. That'll be fun. Uh, oh, housekeeping. There, uh, The forum is in there. It's working. We checked before we started for those watching live. The forum is in the description box below. If you've been here, like if you were here before it started, you might just need to refresh. But the forum is below. 
that you can put your name and address in and we'll draw winners for the cards I make link and I'll the mail chat. them out and link in the chat. I always forget that Chris has to remind me. And yeah, for those watching on replay, there's plans again. It, it's just, I got things simmering along with like 20 million other things, but we'll figure something out. But right now the card giveaways are just for the peoples that are here live with me. And yeah, hello to everybody. Hopefully, hopefully we can do this without any major glitches. If it's not, um, yeah, it's just one thing after another, but I've got plans. I've got ideas. I've got some prep work done and we're just going to see if the idea in my head translates into, um, a card and yeah, I just, I appreciate you guys, you know, those of you that, you know, tune in regularly get it. I just, I've seen a lot of blowback and people being really really upset at some of the other makers when an ad pops up during a live like just people complaining some outright freaking out as if like the apocalypse happened and it's just yeah you know it, it, it doesn't add up to much on say just one video a lot of the times like I'm not a huge creator that gets a bajillion views I, I wish I wish but every little bit adds up you know all the pennies that drop into the <laughs> into the container it all adds up helps pay the bills so yeah thank you guys thank you guys for being here I appreciate it thank you Irma so yeah and I still got a million things to figure out with this streaming software too so stay tuned for all the things and yeah those watching live put your names and address in the form and Chris aka the unpaid intern will draw names at the end of the live I'm planning on making two cards again that's the plan it should work hopefully hopefully everything should work I've been like scrambling and just trying to figure out what what I'm doing with my life we'll see it's, it's gonna be loads of fun yes Roberta and that's is exactly it you know the the content is free we're allowed to use youtube for free i know there's i don't do it chris does you pay for youtube I pay premium, for premium yeah. yeah it drives him nuts when i'm like look at this video and i'm showing a youtube video and i'm getting interrupted by ads and he's like what? i know i need to pay for it too and i do and i've had people ask me that i do as a content creator on youtube i earn a percentage of that it's small because I am a small creator, you know, I don't have millions of subscribers or anything like that, but I do get a little, a little piece of that pie. So it's all good. It's all good. But anyway, anyway, it's, um, too bad they aren't crafty. Ads. Speaking of that, I did block. I went through Manal, went through the back end. I have blocked those certain knockoff sites that we're not going to discuss. I'm not getting into that, um, but they are blocked. I've had the other ones blocked for years now because I refuse. I will not take a penny from their advertising because rotten companies that steal, they literally steal my card photos from my website, etc., to promote stolen product. So yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not going to get into it. I could rant about this all day, every day, and I do. But I blocked the other big one that's been going around. And yeah, I refuse to allow their ads to show up on any of my platforms. So we're good. We're good there. And yes, again, hello to all my peoples. Um, is the jumper the same? Yeah, it's the same sweater. Everyone's been asking about the sweater. I <laughs> do not have a link for it. I, we bought it locally. Um, come here and I'll look at the brand, I guess. Uh, here. I don't know if It'll be on the back of your neck, from... goofball. Yeah, it is. It's actually Spencer's brand. Spencer's brand. Yes. So it, it was Spencer's in the mall. Um, you know, kind of like Hot Topic or whatever, because that's come back. I, I feel old. Hot Topic is back? I told you that. Didn't I oh, send you the image with the, the, the lineup at the mall? Yes. There was hundreds of people lined up when they opened. Yeah. Hot Topic's a thing. Like the 90s are back, baby. What a I weird... feel I feel really old. <laughs> what a weird present we live in. So yeah, um, and yes, Kat, I did. We passed 92,000 subscribers, Woot. Like I've been saying, when we hit 95, which is gonna take a while, I'm gonna do a big giveaway. When I hit 100, 
which is going to be a chunk of time for now. Because again, I just, I, I, small, small growth. I'm okay with it. Um, but when that happens, trust me, I have, I've been waiting for the 100k milestone for a very long time. And I've just been slowly adding, I have multiple bins of product. I'm going to do like the mother of all giveaways when I finally hit 100k. But we'll celebrate early and celebrate 95 in two or three months, however long it takes. I have no idea. It might take, it's probably gonna take like six months. I don't know. I'm not too concerned about it. But again, every little bit helps. So, um, anywho, back to what I was going on about. Yeah, so that sweater is from, um, Spencer's. Spencer's. That's all I can, so if you have a Spencer's store, they're the, like, they sell like graphic tees and weird, weird things. Yes. <laughs> they, they're the, they're the ones that it's like you walk in and there's like all kinds of crazy shirts and stuff. And the further back you get in the store, the crazier the products get to the oh, point where risque. they're, um, yeah, risque. If you want things for bachelorette parties and that kind of, like they sell those sorts of things, you know? That, that, that kind of store. Anyway, they had Christmas sweaters and they had Bob Ross Christmas sweaters and they lit up and I had uh, one of my kids pick it up for Chris as a Christmas present because who doesn't love a light up Bob Ross Christmas sweater? Um, oh, really? Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, Mari. So yeah, Carabell Studios post today. They are done because of the knockoffs. That's what I'm, that's why I will not advertise those sites. That is why I will always rail against them. That is why, like, I will never, ever, ever be okay with it. That, that is now one of multiple brands that have shut down because they couldn't, they couldn't keep going. And I know brands that I used to work with that closed down because they couldn't do it anymore. So, um, yeah, it really sucks. It really sucks. So I have them blocked from my uh, AdSense and whatnot. So they cannot, I, they won't show their ads, even though, especially the newest one that's been up for the last, what has it been? One, it's only been a year. Um, I have them blocked. I won't take, I won't take a penny of their, their advertising money and I'm not okay. I won't promote them, nothing. And they email me 20 times a day. I get emails. They want me to promote. They've, they've gotten to the point where they're just like, name your rate. And I refuse. I won't take a penny. Anyway. Okay. Let's go back to um, the card making. And I'm going to switch over the video. Wait, I got to. Yep. We do this. And then we do this. Because I still, like I always say, like a broken record, I still haven't figured out how to do this in one click. It's on the list. But this, this is back in stock for one, but stay tuned. Stay tuned for the end of this live. We're going to announce an upcoming giveaway. So stay tuned. But anyway, Cardmaker Sketchbook. I was talking about before how, because they have the, um, I talked about this, was it last video? The last live or the one before? I don't remember. Anyway, I think it was the last one. Anyway, they have them in like portrait orientation. I've gone over this in a Trinity Stamps release and review a couple months ago, whenever it was that this came out. But most of my cards are portrait. I don't know why. I don't do landscape very often, but I'm going to just keep using. So this is what I did the last live. I just turned it, sketched out my plan. So I've sketched out my plan, my beautiful sketch. You know, I should be designing stamps again because my drawing skills are amazing. <laughs> I love <his> drawings. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> I'm not bad though. I didn't design that because the stamp set is this one. <laughs> so there's my interpretation of the stamp. <laughs> and like totally not to scale. I don't care. I just, I had the idea in my head, sketched it all out. Anyway, and like I said, stay tuned. I, I, I We've got a fairy, a crafty fairy godmother for, um for all the fun things. So the plan is to use this stamp set, which is on sale. I discovered that last night when I was mulling ideas and going through my stash and I was like, ooh, I got this and I haven't used it yet, etc." And yeah, it's on sale. I have a link to the sale category, definitely worth checking out. Um, Cause there's a bunch 
of products on sale. Like some really good ones like stamp and die sets and the holiday mica stain spray sets on sale and like just a ton of products. Tons. Tons of products. The entire Tim Holtz holiday wafer dye collections on sale. It's like a hundred dollars off or something like that. Like crazy. Crazy. Anyway, I'm planning on using it. That was the one thing I didn't do before we started was um, sniff apartment dyes. And that's the one thing I didn't link to. Which, Chris, you can look up the, the snips because I need these. Snips? They're, they're the Hero Arts ones, but just see if you type in snips. There's yeah, those ones. Those thing. aqua ones work. But then look it up on the Simon site again because I knew there was something I was forgetting. Sure. Anyway, snipping apart your dyes. Because this one I do get actually a lot of questions about. Let me, let me. Uh, the link to the book is in the, Chris will add it to the chat. It is in the description below the video. It's at the like bottom, <laughs> at the bottom. Um, but he'll add a link to it in the chat as well. Yeah, and yes, everything I plan on using, the sale stuff, as well as all my supplies are linked in the description box the below. The Arts one is out of stock. Of course they are, because they're good. Yeah. Well, just put a link to that plus that other one because they're very yeah. similar. It's good memory. Chris will add the links because I knew there was something <clears throat> I forgot. A good pair of wire snaps. They're basically like jewelry ones, you know. Um, but the biggest thing to remember, so I snipped them apart. It's these little bloody tabs. These things are just little devils. One, because I am a content creator and I care about people's safety, you technically should be wearing eye protection. And a lot of them actually, this, this pair doesn't say it, but usually it says right on them to wear safety goggles. And I recommend it. One, I got big old glasses, so that is my eye protection. But if you were to just grab and snip these tabs off, they will go flying. I have actually had them embed into my skin, you know, but you don't need to snip them like that. You just need to pinch it. So I'm, it's pinched. And rather than snipping, just twist it. Comes off. It's not going to go flying. It's not going to stab you in the eye. So that's that's how we do it. Um, I don't need the little bits, I don't think. Oh, I might need the star. Do I want the stars? I'm not sure. But let's just quickly take these tabs off and get her done before we do um, anything else. Okay. Hello, Colleen, and welcome to your first live. They're fun. Mine are totally chaotic and all over the place, but they're fun. <laughs> they can be, yes, Belinda, it's true. Literally, like I have had them embedded in my skin and drawn blood on these things. So that's why you just pinch it and twist it off. And then I keep, you know, either a tissue or a little baby wipe to catch those little pieces because I keep them all contained and then dispose of them so that nobody steps on them. Etc. Oh yeah, it's it's happened, and there's still some when I'm not paying enough attention. You can literally hear it go ping, and I've found them in the you know most random of places. So yeah, pinch and twist. Um, yeah, yeah. So you just do not use scissors. I've seen people like recommend like you know your Tim Holtz scissors etc you will wreck your scissors cutting metal like it will cut gouges into the blades it will cut gouges like it'll wreck your scissors and that's not what scissors are meant for you know so you just a little pair of snips it does the job the hero arts ones are great simon carries several different brands of little die snips the pair i have were from studio Cadia, and yeah I've never needed to replace them ever. I use the same pair for a bajillion years. And yes, some brands do um, offer their dyes already like cut apart everything else. It's just, it depends on the manufacturer. There's a bunch of different factors to consider. And it does actually, it costs more to manufacture wafer dyes separated because it's just an extra step that has to be done. So yeah, but anywho, just safety first pinch, twist it off, and then we're good. I know some people also even do the extra step, like have an actual little Dremel and like sand those edges off. I don't worry about it, but yeah, I'd, I'd be doing that all day, every day. I wouldn't have time to even create if I was doing that with all my die sets. 
I don't have time for that, but I like the idea. You'd but yeah. really good with a Dremel if you were done with us. Oh, I know how to use a Dremel. That's it's a similar tool to when I was doing, when I owned the salon and did nails every day. Oh, Same okay. idea. Like, I'm very well versed in using one of those tools. I just, I've never bothered to get one. I suppose you probably have to use a Dremel on some people. <laughs> I'm talking about their foot. When you're removing gel nails, dude, do you know nothing? <laughs> I've seen some pretty nasty toenails. So. Uh, yes. There were. You could actually get sanding discs yeah. to sand people's feet with basically a Dremel tool. I, uh, all the things I used to see and deal with. And just, anyway. That was the previous life. I don't do that stuff anymore. Anywho. <laughs> yes, protect your eyes. Even even doing like a little pinch twist, honestly, like protect your eyes. You can get little safety goggles. If you don't wear glasses, you can get like... Safety goggles are cheap, dirt cheap. You can even get them, I think, at like the dollar store, you know, because you don't need anything robust. You just need to protect your eyes. And flying pieces of metal, not good for eyes, you know. Anyway, we'll get these all um, separated just so I can put this stuff out of the way. There we go. See, didn't take very long. And then I just pull it up like a nice little package and get rid of it. And we're good. Okay, so yeah, this set's really cute. I loved him and I, I love this. I think I'm going to use both. Could do two cards because that's where my brain is right now. I just put the dies in the back of the packaging because it is what it is, you know. And Amy, you did nails for like, yeah, I owned a salon. I am a professionally certified esthetician. I used to do hair removal and nails and I owned a salon and all the things. And then I gave it up when I got pregnant with kid number four. Yeah. Because having two children under the age of two on top of everything else. And I gave it all up. And then my life fell apart, got divorced. No regrets. Life is good. So that's why I call it the former. My former life, that's what I used to do. So we need to do... Uh, nails are bad enough. My daughter waxes people. Ask people. Yeah, I did hair removal. <laughs> the stories I could tell. <laughs> uh, no, actually not. It wasn't that. I just... The, I enjoy, One, I enjoyed the hair removal more so because I had some people that were the most genuinely lovely calm gentle people but when you rip hair out of people's bodies the language that comes out of their mouth like you i would just i would be cackling like i was called a sadist by many people but i just i found it funny i was like what did you expect honestly honestly if you're going you make an appointment to go get hair ripped out of your body it's not like cuddling with kittens fuzzy warm feet like it's painful <laughs> Oh, and the language. I just, I, I have been, and that's also part of why, like, trolls don't bother me on the internet, like, at all. I have been called to my face the most vile, horrific thing, things I cannot repeat in good company, you know? And I would just howl with laughter. with some, And, like, all my clients always, after the appointment, they, like, I had some almost in tears. Were like, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I said that to you. And I'm like, dude, it made you feel better. I don't care, you know? It's been scientifically proven. The drop in a few F-bombs, swearing, everything, really, like, lowers pain receptors. So, people could call me whatever they wanted when I was yanking hair out of them. So, yeah. Good time. <laughs> there was a Mythbusters episode about that, actually. Did the Mythbusters yeah. do that? Yeah, there's been scientific studies. Yeah, no one believed me back then. I was like, this is a fact. It is a proven fact. It is literally a proven fact. Not just me making things up as an excuse to get away with swearing. It's a proven fact that swearing genuinely lowers your brain. Apparently, like you just, yeah. So I used to always tell people, I'm like, you don't need to grin and bear it and be all, you know, whatever. Yeah. I was like, just scream and yell and let it all out. It'll, it's easier. It's easier on everyone. So anyway, anyway. <laughs> it's a much more comfortable experience for you. <laughs> oh i used to sweat it was it's a lot of work because i didn't do oh, waxing yeah. i did sugaring which is much better fyi uh but it's very labor intensive to do sugaring like it's a lot of work and i would sweat anyway okay back to what i was doing back to our regular scheduled program you guys 
Uh, yeah, I think my daughter is in the perfect profession. She gets to cause people pain and they thank her and pay her to do it. Yes, that is the one thing I miss. Not not specifically causing people pain, but I, I, I was very good at what I did, you know, and I used to ca I used to find it funny because it was people I knew. They were my clients. We got to know each other, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, they'd book appointments with me. I'd rip their hair out. They would cry and call me names and swear. And then they'd give me money and a tip. It was good. It was good. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so anywho. Anywho. Okay, we'll get back to... Yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Heat embossing is the plan. We're going to heat emboss. I'm just using black. Eh, I'm like... My cords all tied up. Everything's a mess. Um, that's why I say welcome to the chaos, you guys. We're always all over the place. It's just, it's just the way it is. I got a mess, but I got, okay, this is just black cardstock. It's not, um, black watercolor paper. I'll get to that when we get to the actual, like, coloring of these images and it'll make sense. But this is just Simon's black cardstock. And then... I'm using my anti-static powder tool and I'm trying to get in the habit of doing the anti-static powder separate so that I'm not constantly getting it all over my grip mat because that's just annoying. So if I do that outside the misty, I don't have a bunch of like anti-static powder because you just have to wipe this off. It's just photopolymer, you know, the grip mat. And again, everything's linked in the description box below, but that just saves me having to clean it as often if I do the anti-static powder separately. It's just one last thing I have to deal with. So anyway, um, <laughs> I'm a good swearer and so am I. You know, if they gave a degree for swearing, that is honestly the only reason I want to learn other languages is just so I can swear in them. You know, you don't even need to teach me the other language. Just teach me all the swear words in every other language so I can swear in multiple languages. That'd be great. And I can with some. But anyway. Anyway. I don't swear in my lives. I am family friendly. We just have interesting conversations here. That's all. Very okay. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get out of there. There we go. There we go. Okay. Anti-static powder. Let me put the lid back on. Um, you know that you can use the plastic packaging that comes with company stamp storage. Mine tear instantly when I try to put them back. What's your secret? I just... Luck, dumb luck. Most of the time. Like, some, sometimes. Sometimes, because especially, the you know, the corners of the backing of stamp sets are sharp. And if I'm not paying attention, like, I generally... I just built a habit of, I, like, kind of get it straight. You know, but especially sets that I use a lot, after a while, the sides do split. It's because the packaging is, is thin. And when it comes to that's when I put it in actual, you know, storage sleeve, whatever. And then I take the packaging because it's usually just split on the seam and I save it for, for shaker cards and things, you know, the flat shakers, because that's, this is perfect for that. But generally dumb luck is just the only reason. And if it's only a little bit of a tear or sometimes they'll tear right at the bottom, I just tape it. Put a piece of tape. We're good. We're good. Anyway. Um, clear embossing ink. Okay. Black cardstock. Clear. Clear embossing ink. Gold embossing powder. Whoop. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, tap. Clear embossing ink. And we're just gonna stamp him just to be safe even though I look it looks like I got a perfectly good impression we'll just we'll just do it a second time yeah and then we'll do gold embossing powder okay Tap off the excess. We'll set him aside. 
we'll set him aside. Because I'm going to use this other one that I thought was just... I couldn't make up my mind between these images, so why not use both? Okay. Um, I'm not going to corner around my packaging. Same with, like, using a dermal on wafer dye. I don't have time for that. Like, if I'm going to do anything extra with anything... I don't have time. I don't have time. I... I post too many videos and I have too much work to do. Uh, and I already, oh, good job, Amy. I can see I actually got the stamp image on here. So we're just gonna flip it over. This is why cardstock has two sides because the embossing powder would catch that spot. And I don't want that. Okay. Okay there and then we can stamp this one just like so and get that yeah okay and then coat this one with gold embossing powder There we go. Now I'm gonna put the lid on that. I'm gonna start my heat tool, let it heat up for just a few seconds. Do that. Do this. What now? I can't hear you. Okay. Oh yeah, because you wouldn't see it. I was going to ask you, but then I was like, oh crap, you won't be able to see it anyway. I think we've all survived our first ad break. Is everyone okay? It does. I am not. I'm not happy. I don't like being forced to change things. I'm. I don't like change. I don't. I don't like being forced to do things that I don't want to do. It makes me not happy. But we have gold embossed images, yay, and we all survive the ad break. Hopefully, hooray, and we'll just see what happens. Um, so yeah. And yes, those that are on YouTube Premium don't get them. Um, do you have an opinion about the large Misty? Depends on what you mean by the large one, like the one I just used or the big one. Um, but would like to stamp inside of cards without, oh, without bending it. So you mean the big one? The big one is huge. I've shown it in, in old videos. I haven't used it in a really long time. I have it. It's, it's enormous. Uh, you might need to link to this. Look up the Misty and see if they have the memory Misty. Because it's the big one. I keep this always because this thing is a monster. Um, I love it, but it's literally. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it. You guys, it's this big. This is the biggest Misty you can get. This one is 12 by 12. It's enormous. I got it to do like the large format stamps for slimline cards, etc. I don't show it in videos very often because it takes up like my and especially when it's open. You've got 12 plus the lid, so it's like two feet plus, really, of space. It's huge. Which one is that? This is the big one. Yeah. But they... They've got a ton of options. Yeah. It'll be... Like it doesn't have the size of the one. 
No, but it'll be the one that says, like, memory misty. Not near the bottom. Scroll up a bit. The memory misty? Oh, the... Yeah. Okay. If it says me memory one. Because this one's meant more for scrapbooking. That's why they call it the memory misty. Anyway, it is great. It's just... It's enormous. It's been a while since I've shown this in a video, but yeah, I used to do it when I was doing like, you know, a slimline card and I wanted to stamp off the edge of things and that. And it's just like, this gives me, and yeah, you, I could stamp, here's a whole card base. So instead of folding it inside out, like this is eight and a half by 11, or four and a quarter by 11, cause it's half a sheet of cardstock. So, you know, I could stamp wherever. So it is nice. It's just, this thing's a beast. It's, it's enormous. So I just keep it. I can't even put it here. I'm just going to prop it up here for now. It's a beast. So anyway, it is, it is very, very big. Um, yeah. So it's, and my glass mat is, uh, 30. I got the, it's like 36 by 22. To whatever the I think it's the biggest option unless they've come up with any bigger mine is enormous like it's much much bigger than my filming space um so yeah but my my actual filming space is basically what you guys can see the rest is surrounded by clutter lots and lots of clutter <laughs> and we need a bigger boat anyway um, isn't there going to be an assignment says stamp and Tim Holt something coming up? They've got it on their YouTube channel. Stay tuned. They're going live tomorrow morning. I know things. I can't say anything. Let's just say it's going to be worth checking out. It's, I'm not saying nothing. Like not say nothing. But yeah, it's on the Simon Says Stamp YouTube page. They, they've got it scheduled and ready to go live first. I'm not sure what time it's set. You'll see it. It's on there under the live, same as how mine's set up. It'll say what time. It's 9, 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm not 100% positive on the time, but it's tomorrow morning. So definitely worth, definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, yeah, got my images. Now to color them. We have some options. First off, the first one, and this is what I'm going to use because this is actually in stock. One of the items is not in stock. These are the Fine Tech iridescent watercolors. Fine Tech are very nice. I will say the price has come down. I paid a lot more than they are now. They don't look like much, you know, especially on camera with the light. This looks very boring. It looks not not pretty, but on dark cardstock. And my lights are very bright, so the finished photos will show better because they are, that's closer to it, but they are very iridescent and like the colors show up, but my lights are kind of blowing it out, the joys. But these are the fine tech ones. I'm also going to use one. This is what I was originally going to use and it's a good thing I tested before I started this live today. These are the Gonzai Tombi pearl colors I think and they're they're gorgeous they're very pretty but I swatch them and they're not the same there's another set and I'll get to that in a second but these don't show up on dark cardstock nearly as prettily they kind of do on camera but in real life they just they're kind of more reflective these look prettier on light color cardstock in my opinion but I'm going to use the the white for his for his beard so that's why I have it out the other option, and this is the one that sold out. This is, and this is similar to the fine tech set, is the Gonzai Tombi Opal set. So same idea. They're just interference pigments mixed with watercolor. The fine tech set has more of the pigment, less filler. This is a cheaper set, has more filler, but they are just they're beautiful. And same thing, like they look like nothing. I remember showing these in a haul video years ago. I've had these for years, and everyone was just like, "What?" But when you show it on dark cardstock that's where the magic happens similar to like the simon hurley um solar pace they're interference pigments you know they look very just kind of blase and then you apply them to dark cardstock and it's like amazing amazing so anywho 
Uh, did Misty's ever go on sale? Hardly ever. Hardly ever. There's not much really leeway there. Um, but yeah, it's not really um, a thing. And okay, so I just did this on black cardstock. I personally have never felt the need to use black watercolor paper. You can get black watercolor paper. I don't have a link for it. It's not the easiest to get. I honestly just, unless you're going to add a ton of liquid, you know, that's what watercolor paper is good for. But for this, I'm just going to paint on here. I'm not going to be like adding layers and working it. And I've never had a problem using, and this is just Simon's black cardstock. Never had a problem using like my little iridescent watercolors on this. But if you're going to keep like adding layers and swirling your brush in and stuff, that's when you'll start noticing if your cardstock starts to peel and bubble up and, um, you know, it's starting to just b degrade and break apart. That's when you need watercolor paper. Um, Stonehenge makes a good black watercolor paper and Legion, I think is another one that I can think of. Legion might own Stonehenge. I don't even know. Anyway, I have it. I never use it. Black card stock just works. So I wonder if you could paint with the Tim Holtz Mega Sprays. Yee, kind of. I was, I was actually going to attempt it, but I, I don't have enough time to think straight right now. So that'll be another project for another day. So we're just going to do this with these because these fine tech iridescent are really pretty. The thing to remember with, where is it? Any sort of metallic whether it's these iridescent or any of the other fine tech ones, the Gonzai Tommies, et cetera, when they've got metallic pigments in them, they need a minute or two to soften. So you just add just a little bit of water. I just keep a little dropper bottle for my water to keep my life a little simpler. These are gonna work up quickly because I actually just painted those swatches right before we went live. So this won't take very long, but it only takes like a minute or two. You let the water sit just for a minute and you show your brush in it and we're good to go. That's, that's all we're going to do. This is going to be super simple. Like anybody can do this. No one needs any special skills. I got a big old water jar off to the side here and yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're just gonna, I've got my little swatches here. So I know kind of what colors are what, although the way the light is working for me, for you guys, it kind of still looks like nothing, but for me, I can see like what the colors are and we're just gonna paint. That's what we're gonna do. So let's just dive in. So go ahead and swirl your brush. And actually I can zoom in a bit. There we go. I'll put that there. And then I can just do that again. It's not like you guys are really gonna, my lights are just blowing all this out. So it's kind of irrelevant, but it's really pretty in real life. Trust me. <laughs> and then you just paint and that's it. It's super simple. And because I heat emboss this, um, they will, actually I'm going to, while I still have color on my brush, we'll just keep sort of adding little bits here and there. Just like so. That's it. That's all you do. Super simple. Okay. All right. Golden. Do you notice a difference in gold embossing and foiling? Yes. Huge difference to me. Like gold embossing is beautiful, but gold foiling is a totally different level. I, it is much more reflective. Um, matte gold foil is sort of similar, but again, heat embossing creates a raised embossed image foiling creates a pressed in letterpress you know foiled image so it's kind of in a sense literally apples to oranges like just a very different um a very different look 
And I'm just picking things at random. There's no... There's no real plan to any of this. Although this stamp specifically, this one, I was originally going to stamp it onto regular watercolor paper and use just regular watercolors. Because then you can do glazing and do different layers and like layer the colors and that in between the different areas, which would look amazing. But I settled on this. But there's ideas. Anyway. Thank you, Conchetta, so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. That one. Um, yeah. Hello, Kelly. And let's do some green. So yeah. Oh, you can't even see it. It's here. It's, it's, you know, you guys saw. I added water to it. It all looks amazing. And then we just paint it. And like I said, since we're not um, adding crazy amounts of water or layering or working at it at all, the cardstock is fine. Like it doesn't, at least this cardstock, like I said, this is Simon Says Stamps block cardstock. If you're working on really thin cardstock, you might have more issues. But I've never had a problem with this stuff, like ever. Yeah. Kind of grab them all at random. Yeah. And I just swirl my brush off. Does anyone use the better press plates to foil? Are they better than a regular foil plate? Yes. The better press plates foil beautifully. There's something about them. Like better press plates foil better than foil plates. But you cannot use foil plates in the better press. So the better press ones are actually like, you get way more bang for your buck, but I like both, but that's just me. Um, I will have more videos coming using the better press and more hot foil videos and that kind of stuff. I just, I need more hours in the day. But yeah, the better press plates, you can hot foil with them and they're, you get like a perfect image. It's, it's amazing. What size brush is that? This is just, it's just a nouveau brush. There's, I, there's not even a size on it. You get the entire pack for like eleven dollars or something mm -hmm. like that, and you get like ten brushes. They're just these things are cheap. I've been using them for years. We, again, with something like this, I don't need any of my fancy brushes. I have very, I have some very nice watercolor brushes. You know, um, some very nice brushes. I have a thing for brushes, but for stuff like this, you don't need you don't need a good brush. It it doesn't it doesn't matter. You just need something that's going to pick the color up and be good to go. Because again, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just filling in the little the little areas, and that's it. Kind of looks like a stained glass window. That's kind of what I was going for. Because yeah, the colors kind of glow on dark cardstock. Good luck with that, Christy. <laughs> The better press is fun, and we love it. So yeah. There's, I don't know. I, and I've talked about this. I talked, because I did, that was one of my first lives I did, was unboxing the better press, and I use it live on camera, you know, out, right out the box. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that thing is a bajillion dollars cheaper than an actual letterpress machine, because Chris can attest to it. I looked into it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get an antique letterpress machine just for funsies and one they're enormous two they're about ten thousand plus dollars so i was like um i can't justify buying you know an antique machine like this even though it would be amazing to own one and we have nowhere to put it we need a gutenberg press if we're going to go hardcore yeah exactly you know How many of those i'm just going to start printing my own pamphlets yeah. spreading the chaos don't give me ideas oh god so yeah and it wasn't it was literally after i told chris like this ridiculous thing i want someday you know it's like i want a letterpress machine and then it was like six months later that spellbinders released the better press and i was like add to cart i now own it it makes me happy so anyway it's 
it's a fun little machine. And they've already released an insane amount of plates for that thing. So yeah, I've done a couple of videos on it. And yeah. Okay. Okay, last, I used all the colors. Yes, I've used all of them except for the gold. So I'll use this little gold in these last two spots. Soak up some of the excess water from my brush. And then... That. You also will not get super, you know, perfect coverage. Doesn't matter what brand you use. When you're working with like metallics, iridescent type watercolors, etc. Again, it's just the nature of the product. But I've had people, I'm just thinking that because I've, I've had people comment about that in the past. Because they're like, you know, it can kind of look a little chalky. It can look a little streaky. That's just the nature of the product. And it doesn't bother me because in real, like it's pretty. See, there we go. Like it glows on dark cardstock. It's beautiful. I'm okay with this. Now let's paint Santa. Let's paint Santa Claus. So my plan. Okay. So for him, we're going to do this kind of orangey color. Use that. It's going to make like a little less water. There we go. And then his little hat will, of course, do the sort of pink color. And of course, everything's starting to evaporate on my little palette now. Is that distilled water or just tap water? This is distilled water because it sits in the jar, in the container. So it was tap water and start turning yellow after a while. Yeah. It does not matter what water you're using for watercoloring. I do get asked that a lot. It doesn't matter um, because it evaporates. You know, my big jar that I use when I'm watercoloring, it's huge. That's why I keep it off camera. Um, that's just tap water because it gets dumped out every few days. You know, I use it when I'm splattering. That's what I rinse my brushes off in, et cetera, et cetera. It literally does not matter. But anything that's going to sit... So if it's sitting in a spray bottle, if it's sitting in a container, et cetera, distilled water. Because, yeah, you'll know, I, and I have it around here. So in fact, Chris, you want to grab it for me? I can see it. Grab what? I'm going to make sure you turn it on so people can see that. It's at the top, right in front of your face, that spray, that black spray bottle. Yep, that one. So that's, that's tap water. Looks like urine. <laughs> It's not, okay? <laughs> That's tap water. That's what happened after however long. These bottles are about the same, eight, like, years. And I've refilled this one multiple times. But this I've always kept distilled water in. This one I had put tap water in. And it not only stained, like, the bottle itself has become stained over time. It's just the nature of, you know, there's little greebleys and things in water. And that's fine. But distilled water for containers, etc. So that's, that is why I recommend distilled water, especially when you're at, if you're going to add it to products for what you know, different reasons, etc. But for the actual act of like watercoloring, those sorts of things, it doesn't matter because you know, you're applying it and it's just immediately going to evaporate dry. It's not sitting there for an extended period of time. Okay. So do that. And then we're just going to do... Okay, now, back to what I was doing. So now we're gonna add, we'll do some, some green on these. And while the heat embossing technically will resist because these are pigments, they will sit on top of heat embossing if you're not careful. It's not the end of the world, but when I can, I try to avoid it just so it's not obscuring the little details. So you just 
paint it in just like so, and then we're good. Tiny zigzags. Yeah. Oh, give me one second. Give me one second. Is die? Yeah. Well, th well, thank you for the super chat. Die Hard, of course, is a Christmas movie. Absolutely, it's a Christmas movie. We are team Christmas movie when it comes to Die Hard. That's the only time we watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> we should watch the second one this year. We you should know, watch the first one and then the second one. Yeah, okay. We don't watch very many movies, really. We don't have time. But Die Hard is 100. I got Chris. Yeah, I got you the Die Hard <laughs> picture book <laughs> for yeah. Christmas the one year. It's yeah. around here somewhere. I think it's upstairs. It's in it? my drawer. Yeah. But yeah. And didn't I get you the ornament? Yes. Yes. That is in my office. I got you the ornament too of um, John McClain inside. John McClain the, inside the, the furnace. Yeah. The when he's crawling through the yeah with his lighter. Yeah. Chris has that Christmas ornament. Yeah. Die Hard's a Christmas movie, man. Like, good luck ever persuading me otherwise. I'm very tempted to get. You can get the Nakatomi. Is that what it's called? Nakatomi. Nakatomi Plaza. Yeah the advent calendar where he's falling oh. <laughs> every day he falls farther and further down towards Christmas <laughs> oh that's a thing too you know we Rip. should get that Rip Alan Rickman yeah oh Alan Rickman was I cried that one still makes me sad he was an absolutely brilliant actor so yeah okay so we've got super reflective along the bottom and then we'll just kind of keep adding color because you know why not until we got these guys all filled in so we'll do this blue which is super pretty all of them are pretty really it's iridescent and shimmery and fabulous and all of that and then we'll go in with this like purple shade which is also beautiful. they're all beautiful they're all beautiful It is the Nightmare Before Christmas, a Christmas movie. Honestly, I still have to watch it again. I haven't seen The Nightmare Before Christmas. When did that come out? It's got to be over well over 20 years now, yeah, isn't it? Uh, hold on. That's a great question. I think it's the 90s. I guess it's the 90s. 93. Holy man. It's been a long time. It has been a long time. I long time. haven't so, seen it since the 90s. Even though I... It's a 30-year-old movie now. Man, we're getting old. I need to rewatch. I was saying that to Chris because I have the Nightmare for Christmas nail polish. That's what I'm wearing. Gremlins um, is a Christmas movie. <laughs> Gremlins. <laughs> uh, an apt description of our children. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yes. Really? Honestly? Almost. You know, if we're going to get down to it, because like, people love to argue about what is and what isn't a Christmas movie. It's like other things in life with other situations, some of which I'm not going to get into, but Chris knows exactly where my brain's going. But, you know, anything can be a Christmas movie if you put your mind to it. You can. You know? If it's just you enjoy that whatever movie it is at Christmas time, then it's your Christmas movie. I'm fine with it. My Christmas movie is Bad Santa. Bad Santa. I do love Bad Santa. Bad Santa's awful. It is so good. <laughs> it is. But it's good in a very awful way. Yeah. Mine is still, like, absolutely Elf and Home Alone. Home Alone is... That, to me, both those movies, it does not feel like Christmas until those movies are on. And I just, like, I can't get anything else done because I just, I have to watch them. Yeah, because we watched Home Alone with the kids and they got a kick out of that. They did. Like...
best movie. And Elf is just, for me, Elf is a classic. I absolutely love it. Santa! I know him! <laughs> Didn't he ad-lib a lot of that movie? Oh yeah, he drove John Favreau nuts. That's why they've never done a second one. Oh, yeah. Because John Favreau just could not stand Will Ferrell. Uh, which I just find hilarious, but I get it. I get it. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I don't get that. He's like being annoyed at Robin Williams. Different types are similar in the the, uh, the the ability to ad lib, but totally different personalities in some ways. Yeah, I guess so. Like Robin Williams t took it to the next next level. Like much, Robin Williams was just. Oh. How much footage do you think? There's tons. They they said what movie was it that Aladdin? they have? No, there's a there's a certain movie that Robin Williams was in that they have like. M hundreds of thousands of feet because it was on film but they have like so much footage that they want to actually make a documentary but oh, i just didn't zelda say something like stop resurrecting yes well no because they they disney used like some ai stuff to oh god that's gross yeah and his kids do not appreciate that and i don't blame them i don't we're not getting into that one yeah. it's yucky but yeah. anyway anyway elf is one of the best movies i love it it's really silly. And Christmas Vacation. Yes. We haven't watched that one in forever. No. That's another classic. Just pure chaos. Isn't Chevy Chase kind of a He's jerk? were just whatever. Whatever. Yeah. You know, I'll watch his old movies. I will too. You know, Christmas Vacation is just. That's where he's going down the, the hill on the, the greased up sled still gets me every time. <laughs> Literally, it's pure chaos. Like, watching that movie actually stresses me out. But I, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. But yeah, it just... Oh, people's life choices. Even though it's a movie and I'm aware. It drives me insane. But yeah, so many good ones. There we go. There. It, does, it looks weird, depending on how you tilt it in light. But once you get it... There we go. There we go. Uh, Will Ferrell is like a special cheese. A little goes a long way. That's actually a good description of him. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you can have too much Will Ferrell. Yes. I, uh, but I do. I love his movies. I just, I love his stupid humor. I, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy his movies. So I am. I'm a big Will Ferrell fan. Okay, let's zoom out. So we've got both of these. And yeah, when they when you tell them in the light, when they're like in the weird spot like this, they look so chalky and weird. But it's the minute, you know, it's like, oh, the beautiful. The beautiful. So we're just going to let them dry. They're almost like completely dry. This one is. This one, we're going to let it dry though before we actually die cut them. So I'm just going to set them over here. Sort of. I need. Uh, gonna put my jar of water where my elbow cannot hit it, because I need to do the panels for the background. Okay. Oh yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I don't remember the name of it either. Someone else will. Uh, don't recall the name of the movie, but it's about two women who exchange homes for Christmas holiday. Yeah, it has um, Kate Winslet. I think. No, is it Kate Winslet? It has Jack Black in it. I know, I know, but it has Jack Black in it. I know what movie you're talking about, and that's actually a really good, um, that's actually a really good movie. I haven't watched that one in years either, but it's really, really good. Yeah, Chris is looking it up. Just Jack Black Christmas movie. The, the holiday. holiday. There we go. That is 2006? Yeah, uh, it came on. It's a good movie. It's actually a really good movie. I, I really enjoyed that one. Okay, we're going to use... The snowflake oval flame, blah, 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 blah. snowflake oval frame embossing folder. We're gonna, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use that on these because I thought it would frame up the trees really nicely. So, as is tradition with specifically Simon's 3D embossing folder, and I have discussed this many times in videos while well, I try not to pinch my fingers um there are no industry standards 
when it comes to pretty much anything for the most part. Um, but embossing folders, especially, you know, they, there's no specific standards. So different brands have different thicknesses, yada, yada, yada. And die cut machines, even if you have the same brand, I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum 6, but even if you have the exact same one, yours could be just, just slightly different. You know, it depends on how much you've used it all just a million different factors. So I share what works for me, but you could have the exact same machine, all the exact same things, and it might not work for you. You just got to fiddle. And once you figure it out, write it down what works for which brand. That's something I still need to do is keep track of what, what sandwich setups work. But with Simon's, because I use these embossing folders 5 million times, I just know it off by heart. So I just have the original platform, not the, not the new one. This is just the old original one. And I have two metal shims. And then the embossed folder with the cardstock. That's it. It works perfect. And then my trusty flower sack cloth. Just so I prevent getting water everywhere. And I missed my cardstock. I just missed one side of it. If you want to do if you're doing a really deep impression type of a folder, um, especially like the Tim Holtz one, it a lot of times helps to miss both sides of the cardstock to get the best impression. But I usually just do one and then I pop it into my folder and I can line it up just like so. And then I run it through my machine. Okay. Again, it's hard with black cardstock on camera, but it's there. It's there. So then we'll just do this again. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of like I like if I'm being totally honest, I've never once watched like a Hallmark Christmas movie. Not once in my life. Have no desire to. Although now I've noticed Netflix is now like releasing I don't know how many and they're very similar but there was one I just watched a preview for and it actually looked kind of good and it's something about their exes yeah I don't even know because I wasn't paying enough attention but I was like that looks actually kind of funny hmm. it's got Blair from oh Chris you wouldn't even know <laughs> like, I'm like trying to remind Chris of the preview I saw myself that I didn't show him. He wouldn't even know. He wouldn't even know who the actors are. But anyway, yeah, I've never seen those movies, but I've noticed that Netflix is now releasing them. So I saw that holiday one and eh. I'm waiting for that one that's coming out with Julia Roberts. It comes out on the 8th. There's like massive big actors and it's that, it's that weird one. You'll have to look it up. But it's where they're like on in an Airbnb and then all the electronic devices go weird. It's based on a book, but it's basically like the apocalypse. Julia Roberts? Yes. See, it's it's out in theaters right now and it comes out on the 8th. And it looks, and like Ethan Hawke's in it. And is Mashallah, I, for, I can't pronounce his name. Mar, Marshallah Ali. He's a phenomenal actor. Leave the world behind? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that movie. <laughs> But yeah, it's in theaters right now, and then it comes out on Netflix on the 8th. Oh, I see. So, we just have a little bit longer to go. Anyway, so I got my little backgrounds. Those are done. Those are done. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> uh, Xmas. Yes, I think that's what it's just called is Xmas. And it, it just, it looked silly, and I was like, I will probably enjoy this movie. So... Yeah. Okay, so that dried up most of it, which it is, you know, it warped these backgrounds. That's fine. So we'll just set those aside again. Come back to these guys. 
and then use the coordinating um, coordinating little wafer die to die cut these. So I'm gonna tape this in place Oop. with just a bit of washi tape so that this does not shift when I run it through my die cut machine. There we go. Fixed it. Okay. Um, yeah, Love Actually is a very popular. And yeah, that one is kind of widely accepted as a Christmas movie. I haven't watched that movie in years. I remember the first time I ever watched it and I didn't like it. It just, it made me angry. <laughs> but I haven't watched it in a lot of years, but I, I know so many parts from it. I don't know. It's kind of like burned into my memory. Okay. Okay. We got the wafer die in place. This obviously is very, uh, uh, the type of image, like a very simple shape to like fussy cut. But I also want to use sentiments from the set and I want to use coordinating wafer dies too. So for me... I bought the I bought the wafer dies to go to go with it. Okay. So we'll just use we'll use my little Empress Mini. And get that all in there. It's all like reflective and amazing. It's amazing. Okay. And I'm gonna use this cardstock for my sentiments too. Okay. So then get that into place. Okay. Did you plan that? No, I do not ever plan my nails to match my projects. If I was doing that, I would literally have to paint my nails like two times a day for the amount of content I put out. Uh, you can just paint over top and have a uh, yeah, and do that like hundred layers of nail polish trend. No, thank you. I'm lucky if I can paint my nails more frequent than like once every two weeks. I don't know. A long time. A long time. Okay. Same with this dude. He's just so cute and reflective. Okay, put those over there. Get that out of the way. And then, yeah, we gotta do sentiments, which, cause this is my plan with the, which again, doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot on doing black on black on camera. You know, but yeah, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna add a sentiment and I had die cut them. So oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I got, I got ideas. Where's the stamps? Let's do a couple of sentiments. I like that one. And we'll do that one. One happy Christmas, one happy holidays. And We'll just use this and I'll just use my color block for this just to make my life a little bit easier. And also because I'm running out of space and don't have space for a misty. <laughs> oh, okay. Did the nail company ever? Yeah, no, I did reach out. We had talked about that in one of the lives. I forget more than a month ago. I did reach out to um, Mooncat and was like, hey. I didn't even ask for anything because I don't do that with brands. Um, I just, I was like, if there was like a code or something, just, a, you know, kind of like a referral code and just let me prove myself basically, you know, it's like, I can bring in, I can bring in some sales and there were, they did respond and they just said that um, we're not currently, you know, adding any more influencers at this time, AKA I don't meet their criteria. And I was like, okay, whatever. I'll keep doing my thing. So, yeah. 
I'm fine with it. Where's my clear in there? I was like losing all my things and I need this. Okay. Okay. I'll stick this just on here. We're just gonna stamp Get everything ready to go. Okay. The Empress machine is not, I will not put embossing folders through that machine. Like most, there's a few people I think that have maybe figured it out. I don't know, I, like I've got a sandwich that works. I love my Platinum 6 machine. I use it, I use my Platinum 6 for my hot foiling, for the better press, etc. So I stick with it. I like my little Empress Mini. I do have the big Empress. I just legit haven't had the time or the space <laughs> to set it up. <laughs> I'm working on that too. You guys will see it eventually, but yeah. Looks good. It looks good, I think. We'll see. We'll see once I pour the embossing powder in here. We're just going to emboss these with gold. Keep it simple. Um, that says a lot of it. No, when it comes to industries and things, you know, nail polish and just anything that's not in specifically crafting and card making, we're, you know, we're just not a niche that other brands a lot of times. And yes, did, are they underestimating me and... You know, all of us that love nail polish. Yes. Like I did mention that to them that, you know, you see my hands in videos and I do a pop out that calls out the brand, you know, things like that. But I get it. That's also why it said like I was wanting to prove it to them, but I'm not going to argue with them over it. It's just funny. But yeah, we're not like there. There's some girlies out there. I don't follow the beauty industry a lot, but I keep an eye on things. And there's some girlies that do, you know, again, nail polish things and they're getting millions of views. Millions. So... I look like I literally am a nobody and I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I'm not pursuing like pimping out nail polish as a career. So I, I'm fine. It's all good. Okay. It's all melted. Yep. Yep. We're good. Give me one second here. Oh yeah. No, we're good. Never mind. Everything's good. Everything's good. Where's my cloth? There it is. Um. Adding lunar paste to the razor. Yes. It would. It would get a little. The only thing I was thinking of doing, and I'm still thinking of doing it, was adding maybe a bit of splatter. Um, give me a sec. I wonder. I've got, I've got too many ideas. Okay. I'm setting that aside for a second. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let me, what I want to do first is push this around. Let's see if I can do this without wrecking it. Where's the embossing folder? I've already lost everything. I need a bigger boat. <laughs> okay. I need a bigger boat. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see if I can like this. There we go. There we go. Get it lined up. This one of all the embossing, like not of all of them, but this one has a lot. It's not as deep as some of Simon's 3D embossing folders. Like some of them are very, very deep impressions. It just depends. I like this one though, because I didn't want it to be super deep. I wanted it to be a little bit finer in a sense yeah just to kind of help flatten it out again a little bit got a fruit fly in here mm. anyway okay because if these i don't want them to be like this is like from all the water i'd sprayed on it so if you line it back up you just gotta you can feel it literally like fall into place it just fits and then if I just run it through again it kind of helps 
flatten out the cardstock without losing all the, the detail of the embossing folder. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that flattened it out a little bit more. Let's get this back over here. And then, yeah, we can add just, just a little bit of splatter, not not a ton. I'm not gonna go completely insane. Oh, and we must, we cannot forget. Them's the rules, man. Okay, we'll use a little fine tech for the splatter. And I'll just use all the color, maybe not all the color. I'm not gonna completely insane. But yeah, just my little fan brush. <clears throat> Do a little bit of that. Huh? They're the fine tech ones. Okay. Yep. The fine tech ones. I'm going to do a little bit of the gold because it's going to look all yellow, gold. Kind of the same thing with this one. Because why not, you know? Why not? Do a little bit of the blue. <laughs> If you are finding the image blurry, you can change the settings. There's a little, like, for you guys, it'll be about there, I think. The yeah. lower right corner, a little cog wheel. there's a little cog wheel that you can click on and you can up the resolution because some people's just settings automatically drop it down. It also depends on your internet connection. Um, you can also adjust the sound. Because unless everyone is complaining and then it's an issue on my end, but yeah, yeah if it's an individual's issue, then it's more often just, you just need to adjust the settings. You can also just hit F5 to refresh. Yes, refreshing sometimes helps. It, it depends on people's, like, oh, so many different things. I was only going to add a little spot. You know, only going to add a little. Okay. Um, let's, do, do, couldn't help it, that's okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna let that dry, put that away for now, get that out of the way, yeah, and it's different colors. Love it. Love it. Love splatter with a capital L. Okay. We'll put that over there. That over there. Sentiments. I was going to die cut them. That's what I was going to do. Wafer dies. Wafer dies for the sentiments. Here we go. Got it. that one. And that one. Okay. So, and wash the tape again. So, we will, this one is the Happy Holidays. So we'll just get him taped into place so that he doesn't shift when I die cut it. And then add it to this one, just like so. And just to make my life a little bit easier, take that out of there. Okay, and then we can die cut. The sentiment. Get everything out of the way. Find my die cutting plates. And back to what we were doing. Okay.
Okay. Little sentiments. Don't want to lose the wafer die. Put that back in the packaging. Same with this one. So we've got our little sentiments. Wafer die. In fact, we'll take that guy, put him away as well. That's the thing about lives. I end up having an absolute crime scene to clean up after. Alright. He can go off. I don't think we're gonna need him anymore. <sighs> the video is blurred. Adjust your settings in the cogwheel at the bottom of the screen. You can up your settings up to I think it's 1080, won't it let I think Yeah, they have 1080. Yeah. yeah. So on a couple of devices. It seems okay over here. Yeah. So it's not on my end. We are good. Are not like I could do anything about it anyways while while I'm live, but <clears throat> yeah. Catch one more incident. Okay. So I did all this. I did all this. And then what was I doing? Card bases. Card bases. <laughs> Would help to have a card base to attach the cards to. Oh, and the insides too. We gotta do the insides. Let's this is all just about fully dry, but we gotta do we gotta do the insides. For this I will need my misty. It's a good thing I kinda cleaned up a bit. Okay. Okay. I cut down just it's just thin white cardstock because my card bases are going to be black. Black cardstock. And you need to be able to have somewhere to write to the recipient. Although, you can leave your card bases black if you're, you know, you can just write with like a gel pen. Like a metallic gel pen would look amazing. Like gold gel pen, that sort of thing. My only peeve with, or caveat, with using a dark card base and writing with a gel pen is you have to write slowly with a gel pen, you know. Because otherwise it skips and it's messy. And I can't write slow. To, I don't have time. Like, when I'm filling out these cards, when I send them to winners, et cetera, I'm like, you know. <laughs> so I would rather just do a separate piece of cardstock. So that's what I'm going to do. We're just going to keep it simple, though. So I'll line up the, the same image. I'm just going to stamp it with Simon's flannel ink. It's a very pale gray ink. So we'll just ink it up stamp it down it's very subtle but that's what I was going for I lost my I lost everything everything I lost my mind there we go okay Chris isn't here at the moment to put up links to anything he was testing is everything good was able to watch on 1080p at 60 frames per second okay. so yeah everything's good I even went behind a VPN and to put myself in the States to check and it was still fine there. <laughs> I look good in all regions. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, all regions, all time zones. There <laughs> uh, we go. Okay. We'll stamp that. Yep. Wipe him off. It has become one of my favorites, the Simon's flannel ink, because it's just such a nice light gray. It's just a good neutral. Just a good neutral. So I use it a lot for things like this, or if I want, you know, a very subtle background, that sort of a thing. Um, we'll just add this little sentiment to the inside of both. We'll just kind of. Off center, this one. Is it a flannel ink? Yeah, it's link. It's listed in the supplies. Is it? It is. Yes. I can't find it anywhere. Well, it was there. It was there. Oh, it's right in front of your nose, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, okay, stamping that. 
with Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. So yeah, just simple, nothing too crazy. And then put the other one back in there. And we'll do it again. There we go. So yeah, and then just gotta let that dry because Versafine Claire Nocturne ink does take a little bit of time to dry but now we're done with the misty i won't need it hopefully unless i really mess something up and then we need to make the card bases so more black cardstock score it at five and a half because i'd already cut the sheet in half before the live so these will be top folding a2 sized black note cards because yeah nothing like using black cardstock for christmas cards i love it it's dark all the time so it fits <laughs> it does fit doesn't it but it makes all the pretty shimmery color stand out that's why i chose it that not that it's black like my soul anyway. <laughs> uh now can i i will need to shave off the littlest bit because these panels actually i think no, oh, I won't need to do nothing. I won't need to do nothing. I just got to adhere them. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's. I'm going to adhere these. I'm not trimming them down because I don't want to lose any of the detail on the from the embossing folder so these are going to completely cover the card bases so technically i could have like saved myself a little bit of hassle and just kept the card bases white you know they're getting covered up anyway but i like just about drop that um i like having them as black card bases and then adding the little panel of white cardstock to the inside. I just think it looks a little more, a little more finished. And then, it's another use for the Misty, is because it's got the foam underneath it, it can just kind of hold everything in place while the glue dries. Okay. And then, Have you ever tried Yuli watercolors? Yes. Yuli watercolors are gorgeous. Very, very gorgeous. Um, I have them. I have a little dot chart of them as well. And they are phenomenal. Um, the only thing that sucks is places like Simon Says Stamp can't carry them because they're exclusive to um to yuli but they are they're beautiful they're beautiful they're so shimmery and sparkly and amazing they just very much appeal to my inner magpie there's one thing i i like art supplies not just card making supplies i like art supplies i have a lot of watercolors and then i got into gouache i haven't done any videos showing much gouache other than like the white gouache used for like splatter and stuff but watercolors and gouache and all the things all the things okay so if we just let those sit let the glue dry put my stamps away while we do that okay um 
The waffle flour grit mat, it's linked. Can you add the link to the chat? It's the one that's directly next to the Misty in the supply list. Sure. Waffle flour grit mat? Yes, the one that's next to the Misty because there's different sizes. Because I, I think I only have the one listed anyway. You only have the six. And yeah, five that is the one for the Misty. So yes, everything I'm using is already listed in the description box below the video. There's a list with um, links already added, but Chris's... The unpaid intern is helping post them in the chat as well, but it is there. And thank you so much, Leanne. I really appreciate it. Okay, put my stamps away. I can adhere. Yeah, okay. Okay, got these. So, I want to make sure I put the right dudes inside the right cards so i'm just going to adhere these panels and i'd already trimmed them down before i stamped on them so they're like five inches five and a quarter by four roughly just slightly smaller than an a2 card add a little bit of glue you don't need much and then pop that onto the inside of my card just like so. He's gonna go on there. Of this one. Gonna pop him in. Perfection. Okay. And then this one. Gonna go like that. Okay. So we got the insides. And then, but wait, there's more. Um, I'm going to put the lid on there before that dries out. I pulled out, this is an oldie but goodie. It was a snowflake frame die set. This came out like three years ago, something like that. I'm not using the frame because the frame's quite big. I thought about it, but it was going to cover up a lot of the detail, so I didn't use it. However, all the little snowflakes in the set, because there's all these individual snowflake wafer dies I pulled those out and I die cut some of Simon's gold glitter gold glare cardstock it's gold it's amazing we loves it it's just perfection so I die cut gold glitter snowflakes got a little, got a little pile of them here Got one, two, three. There we go. So they each have their own little selection of snowflakes. Because I thought it would be kind of fun to just kind of add these. Here and there. In around these dudes. Just kind of tuck them in to some of the different spots. Not so far, anyway. You know, just like that. So it gives it a little more, a little more zhuzh. So we'll stick that there. Stick that one there. Stick that one. Stick that one. Stick that one. Okay. And then to adhere these dudes, I need black foam square. Um, where did they go? One of the thinner ones. There we go. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Like I was saying, there's method to the madness. So we'll add black foam squares. You could also just run, um, like die cut scraps of like black cardstock. Um, that would also work. You know, skip using the foam squares completely. Just die cut a bunch of scraps of black cardstock and adhere all of those. That would most definitely work. But I like using I like using the foam squares. And Simon at times puts them on sale, and that's when I stock up. So if I trim that one like so, yes, 
right in there. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now I just gotta repeat the process. This is the kind of stuff I edit out of my videos. So you guys don't like sit here and watch me just peel and stick. But yeah. The joys of the lives. Aren't, isn't it enthralling? <laughs> Are you not entertained? That's another movie we need to watch. Yes. We haven't watched I haven't seen Gladiator in It has one of those really I can remember the the soundtrack to it more than anything else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good movie though it is a good movie it's completely historically inaccurate of though. course it's inaccurate really how many movies are historically accurate honestly not very many like I watch it for the entertainment not for the accuracy is there any donation oh thank you Susan Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, no, I'm glad you guys enjoyed my videos. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying the lives. I just... Yeah, it's just... It's odd to me sometimes. I don't know. I'm just... I'm just a person. And I'm chaotic. Because <laughs> uh, really, if it's not one thing, it's another. Uh, okay. Okay. There we go. There we go. Good enough. We got the foam squares. They'll they'll hold these guys down. I don't want to adhere to me yet because like yeah, some of these snowflakes I thought I would kind of tuck tuck underneath a little bit. But I'm only gonna do little just a few little dabs of glue. I don't need a lot. I'm not gonna bother. They don't need to be like fully adhered. I don't care if little parts of them are popped up a little bit. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Just like that. And then trying to figure out where I'm gonna put the other ones. And then a little few little dabs of glue. Just like so. Okay. And then this guy. We'll just add just like one little dot to the center of him. And it'll go right there. And then you can tuck this one in. There we go. Right there. You just gotta commit and stick it down. Well, I consider that massively. That is literally like the biggest compliment because yeah tim holtz i i could watch if tim holtz wanted to paint a wall i would sit there and watch paint dry if he was doing it you know that man's a unbelievably creative genius so yeah i get nothing done i try to multitask when i watch his videos i get nothing done because i'm just sitting there like the entire time like it's just oh, brilliant so many ideas so yeah it's it's always a good day when Tim Holtz has a video, but we won't get any more probably till the new year, I assume. But you never know. He might surprise us. You never know what he's got. Well, no. Right, tomorrow, you guys. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. On the Simon Says YouTube channel. It's, it's, it's a publicly announced. There's something coming with Tim. So I assume he's going to, he's going to be sharing some things. I can't, I can't say nothing more, but yeah, we get to watch Tim tomorrow. I'm excited. I forgot all about that. 
We were talking about it literally at the beginning of this live. Anyway. Uh, I really do have the memory of a goldfish at this point. Okay. Now we just got to repeat the process. Anywho. <laughs> uh... Little, little dirty blue. Don't really need much. And then just stick her down. I take notes because he says so much. They did, they've time stamped. Like they've, um, you know, he's got his team and Julie has gone back through all his old videos and they've got them all like time stamped and stuff now. Because yeah, some of his videos there are so many techniques. There's so much information. It's just, it's a, and he's got now like tons of videos, but they've got them all timestamped now. So it's a lot easier to find. And also if you're not a member of the Tim Holtz addicts, like ADD, I see, like we're addicts, you know, you gotta get your fix, <laughs> but there's a Facebook group and there's, damn, I think there's over 50,000 members at this point. There's a lot of people on there, but he's got, you know, his main same thing, like his team's on there and you can ask questions and there's inspiration and there's a lot but yeah they've got everything like organized so that you can find what you need to find and it's awesome because yeah there's a lot of times i need to reference certain things it's like he showed how to do this one thing with this one product yeah you look it up you find it go to the video it's time stamped pull it up there it is be inspired and then you watch the rest of the video and you get nothing done even though you've seen it three times you know happens all the time but again worth it like there's just mass and plus product knowledge like there's a lot of products that it is more than worth sitting through the videos just to learn like what it was designed for what it was meant for what's the best way to use it etc etc and then you're like me and you throw all those rules at the window and you do what you want anyway <laughs> but i still try to give the good advice you know, this is how it's supposed to be as I'm, you know, breaking whatever rule it is I'm giving you guys on camera. Like I always say to my children, do as I say, not as I do. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's just my life 24-7. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, he announced in, I think it was one of his holiday hoopla lives. I forget. It was either that or it was the newest paper trimmer video I, one of them tim officially announced he said the last distress color is being released next year it will be a neutral because he had announced that before the last two the last like lost shadow was released he said the last two colors would be neutrals and one of them was lost shadow and then he said the new the last one will come out sometime in the new year so we'll just have to wait and see It'll be another one of those ones where, yeah, I'm going to get it. This, you know, I'll be pre-ordering it sight unseen. I don't care. And I'm sure I'll love it. It's been like that with every single color he's released. Like, honestly, he could release baby puke green and I would 100% order it. I wouldn't care. Okay. Am I straight? Am I centered? I think so. Not only do I have the memory of a goldfish now, but my eyesight is just not what it used to be. Just is what it is. Okay. So we got, and again, they look chalky, but it's when you tilt it in the light that they look like they glow. You know? So, not including picket fence, the white one, there are 71 distress colors. Because this final one will make it 72. So, but yeah, and that doesn't include picket fence or there's those metallic sprays because I don't consider it was like part of the distress line. So, yeah. Now I need to pop this guy up with just also a little bit of foam. Where are my littler squares now? There we go. Okay. I always pre-order the new colors. I know, all of us. We just, you know, it's Tim Holtz. You just know. Like, this is just what you do. So, the minute the pre-order option comes up, it's just like, add to cart. And then we'll sit there and watch the video. And I'm always just like, 
amazed. Because especially for me, I don't get them. Well, they don't ship out till they're live. But even the couple times, I think only once. Yes, only once. Because Heidi at Simon's Stamp had said it to me. And I actually got it like a day or two before it went live. So I got to see it. And I remember just opening the box. And I was just like, oh my god. It was prize ribbon. That was the one that I got ahead of time. Which was just... Oh, that was a good day. So, yeah. Look, it's so blue! Shift over a little bit. Crap. Try not to wreck it. Because that would just, you know, not be good. There we go. So, yeah. Popped up the sentiment. Just like so. And then we just gotta do this again. With this one. Stick that little piece in there. That one there. And this one right there. Okay. Get those out of the way. Okay. Let me. There we go. down there. You stay in your spot. Okay. And only because they're sitting literally like right in front of me because I used them in a recent video. In the video I did um I think I just posted that yesterday. Was that just yesterday? I was up till midnight working. I can't even remember anymore. Um the Simon says stamp December card kit video. I used these so I don't have a link to these. Look up Trinity Rock Candy. Trinity Rock Candy. Trinity Rock Candy. <laughs> we'll add a little bit of bling. Even though there's already a ton of bling going on here. I can zoom back in. Let's do you never have enough bling. He's learning. We can teach that unpaid intern. Make sure all these guys are glued down. <clears throat> Not a dumb question. It's in the description box below the video. Just right below the video. The Just expand it. And it's at the very top. And it's just a link to the Google form. Make sure everyone, you guys do that. Put in your name and address. Those that are watching live, those on the replay, like I said, will figure something out down yeah, the road. I'll put another link to that. And Chris will post it in the chat as well. Yep. And you guys can, um, yeah, enter your name and address. We'll draw winners. I'll mail these cards out. I've been mailing them out to the winners. I mailed out last week's, a few days ago. So hopefully they'll arrive soon. And yeah. Yeah, because these are just about done. We're going to just add a little bit of, little bit of extra bling. Because why not? You know, why not? These little, these little like clear confetti dudes from Trinity. So just give it that little extra something. That over there. That's the one I wanted. It's a big guy. And these little ones here. That one there. To the madness. Okay. There we go. It's just, just subtle. Okay. So just pick these guys up and tear them down with a little bit of craft tacky glue. So these will show up a little more opaque until the glue dries because the glue does dry clear. So then they'll be more. A little more subtle. There we go. And then just repeat the process on this one. And 
there we go. Okay, let me put my lid on my glue so that I don't dry on my glue. And let me put these back in their container so that I don't knock that over. Okay. There, now you can see all the embossed snowflakes and the glue, the glow. Um, did I not link to this? What is that? It is the embellishment wand. It's, I probably didn't scroll down. No. no. So go down, delete that, scroll down, go to my most used. No, no. Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. Go down to the most used. Yeah. Hit enter on the blank. Scroll right. The, no, up. Oh, you were right on it. This There's thing? two of them. The, not, the one that doesn't say pierce. Yep, that's the one. Of course, I'll link to it. Okay, we're back. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is Melon Bus One. He's gonna link to it, and I'll edit the links um, afterwards. And there's the inside. Again, it's hard to show. Like, it's weird on lives. I don't even have it like this when I'm filming my videos, even though I use the entire same setup. It's weird how it shows up in lives. My lights are just almost too much in some ways. But anyway, and then there's the little Santa dude. But I will take photos like I always do. I take photos and post them. I do, you know, my blog posts, social media, etc. So I'll be able to take photos and show all the all the things. So there we go. But there's the cards. So let me I'm gonna go like this. Then I'm gonna go like this. And then I'll put these guys back there. And then I'll let Chris draw a couple names for the winners and announcement for next week's live. So December 3rd, because I always go live at 2 p.m. Central on Sundays. And the announcement that I alluded to at the beginning is I have a very generous, crafty fairy godmother. We are going to do a giveaway on next week's live so those that are attending the live she is going to give one of the trinity stamps card making sketchbooks to the lucky winner so i've already like done a review on the book and all the things and all that stuff so yeah i kind of excited about that it's gonna be super fun so that was my little little sketch i showed at the beginning my my very fancy amazing sketch on the card I was gonna make I love this thing and it, it's hefty like it is a big hefty book it comes in its own box it's very 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 nice like Tanisia the owner of Trinity Stamps like she spent it was like one or two years planning and prepping and like perfecting this before she released it and I loves it so that will be next week so stay tuned for, for that live. I'm very, very excited about that. And we'll still keep doing this card giveaway on the lives because it's been working and they've been getting through the mail and showing up to people. And I do love it. Absolutely love it. So did you get... I'm getting two winners right now. Okay, we're getting the names drawn. The first Super winner fun. is Tanya Berger from Reading. UK. Okay, Tanya in the UK. And Nancy Warfel from Arizona. And Nancy Warfel? Warfel. Warfel. Hopefully I pronounced that right and didn't butcher your name. So congrats, ladies. I will be addressing and mailing these cards out to you. Super fun. Super fun. So, yeah. These are fun. We'll see, we'll see how, if my photos can do them justice. I suck at taking photos of cards, you know? Um, but yeah. Okay. We've got a couple minutes. If anyone has any questions, I don't, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Hopefully you didn't miss anything in turn. Hopefully not. <laughs> you got to earn those peanut M&Ms, you know? I know. <laughs> Someday I will be a big boy and get a real paycheck. <laughs> yeah, a real paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Dork. Anyway, 
thank you guys for tuning in to the chaos and yeah these kind of turned out pretty much how i was picturing in my head which is saying something because more often than not what i picture in my head takes a whole other you know route and it just turns out completely different but yeah these were loads of fun again they look so much better when the light shines on them they're shiny they're so shiny so yeah and then just i wonder how it there we go you know yeah yeah it's such a cute little set which well it should still be in stock it is on sale fyi you know, last call on that stuff too, because when I was doing up my links, this, let me put it back in the package so I can actually show it. Um, I've got a link to the sale category in the description box below the video. And this little stamp set is like 60% off or something like that. This Simon, um, I already forgot the name of it, Trees and Stars yeah. stamp set is on sale. And I only use the two images. There's all these other like graphic trees and stuff like it'd be so fun to like yeah heat emboss you get a heat emboss and do some ink blending you can do gradient ink blends and i oh, so many ideas i know yana smakula did a video using just this image and she made like just a stack of cards with it and they're gorgeous and she added just like bling and confetti and things her video is really good i love the cards she makes like just oh, amazing again but yeah she used just this image and created all these cards and it looked so good it was so good so good it's just a fun set so anywho thank you guys so much for for tuning in and for hanging out with me while i made these cards and for chatting and thank you to everyone for the super chats and yeah sundays 2 p.m central that is the the schedule for the lives and then when i'm able to you know i pop in and do you know random lives here and there it just depends Try to give everybody a heads up. If you follow me on my socials, specifically my little Facebook page, and I have all those linked below as well. I got Facebook, my Instagram, I have my Patreon linked, and I post on my community channel here on YouTube as well. But yeah, Facebook's like the easiest place. We've got a good little community going on there. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned with all that too, because we'll just... I, like I said, I got plans. I got, I got ideas mulling and simmering behind me. It just, it just depends. Um, it's only four. That's not bad. No, we did good. Yeah. I was like, this is, this on. is me like flying in a lot. <laughs> Cause usually it's like three and a half hours later. Yeah. <laughs> it's like four days later. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Show off your sweater. Show off the sweater. Yeah. You might as well show off All the right. sweater again. It's from Spencer's. Oh, I keep forgetting I have to go this way. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, his little Bob Ross sweater. If I move back, there we go. <laughs> it's got three speeds. Yeah. Three yeah. Speeds. <laughs> yep. Yep. It works. <laughs> but yeah, it's from Spencer's. I've been, I've literally been getting emails about it. I don't know if they sell things online. I have no idea. But yeah, that is where uh, the sweater was from, is from Spencer's. So, still, anywho. Still need to get you one. I know. The ones I kept coming across, though, that I wanted to wear were kind of inappropriate. Oh, well. You know? We can always put pasties <laughs> over top of that. <laughs> Not that kind of inappropriate, good lord. <laughs> uh, no. 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 You know? <laughs> we'll see. I just, I haven't come across one other than that one I'd shown you, but those were like those really nice ones yeah. that were like wool and you know and i was like i'm not ready to like invest invest in this because that's literally what it would have been it was an investment i was like i don't i can't i can't that's that's too much anyway anyway i will eventually get a christmas sweater i got the light instead because everyone missed the bat light and i was able to get this for like it was 50 percent off so yeah we got the little snowflake light and my little my little Charlie Brown. You actually give him to me. Just be careful because the things hang. The lights. Like you have to grab the battery pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. I got him. I got him for a steal. Here, I'll show you guys my wonderful decorating skills. I'm so good. You know, 
But he's my little Charlie Brown tree. And then I just got wooden, rainbow wooden beads. Again, those were, I got these on clearance and I just strung them onto string and then little tiny mini lights, battery operated rainbow lights. So yeah, he's my Charlie Brown tree. He'll just, he'll just sit in the back corner. Charlie Brown in a way. Yeah. Might eventually, once I find some little, little ornaments for him or I'll make little ornaments. I used to do that, you know, with die cuts and things like that, but he's cute, you yeah. know, and he's just, he just adds to the ambiance of, of this garage. So it works. But anywho, I'm going to go. That gives us time. We're not going to have to scramble to like make supper and stuff no. like we usually are. This is, this is where, and yeah, the, see the glue is already dried. Like they're, cl it's clear now. It's not cloudy how it was when I first adhered it. So yeah, it just makes them a little more, that one's all, like not quite dry. But yeah, the glue dries clear. So these are going to just be like just little extras, you know? So. Links to all the things are down below. Uh, links to the supplies. I will edit this like I always do. I will edit the the supplies. I'll do the, the blog post, social media, yada, 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 like I always do. And for those that are watching to this point, this is moot. But I, I don't do um, edited down lives. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. And I also don't have the computer like processing power. I, I mentioned this to some of my Patreon peoples. I have been crashing my MacBook lately because it's just, it's starting to give up and yell at me when I'm processing videos. So I'm still hoping, still hoping I can push it off until a year from now. I think my hopes are a little too high Maybe because <laughs> it crashed twice yesterday. So processing large videos and something that's like two hours of footage is no, I'm not doing that to my computer. So you guys know though, but just stating it for the peanut gallery. Anywho, we'll see you guys for sure. Next Sunday. I will have videos. I have many videos coming. Like I've mentioned a few times, Simon says stamp is going live. It's on there. It's set up on their YouTube channel. So I'm, cause I'm just not sure offhand what time, but they're going live tomorrow. I think tomorrow morning to announce something with Tim Holtz. It's worth checking out. Um, I literally, I can't say show nothing. My lips are sealed. Um, but you know, Cyber Monday is a thing. They, they, they do things, you know, for Cyber Monday. So stay tuned. And I got a billion videos coming. So whether or not you guys see me live, that's just going to depend on everything else going on. Um, but I will be live for sure next Sunday at 2 p.m. Central. And we'll do that big giveaway from the the crafty godmother. And yeah, that's it for the moment. And thank you guys so much. And I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye. <laughs>